Hi guys, today we have Darren Pujolet. He's one of our top agents in our Highland office. Thanks for joining us, yeah, Darren. Yeah, glad to be here. So you Thanks. had two recent sales. The first one I want to talk about is a Hollywood Hills home on Holly Ridge that you represented right. the buyer. Yes. And that's kind of out of your, you're typically a Manhattan Beach, you know, beach cities guy. How did you find a house in Hollywood Hills and how did you meet your buyer? So the buyers are actually part of my sphere. So that was a good thing. So it was nice. Um, so the introduction was warm, but um, they, they were looking Hollywood. They were all over the map, uh, even South Bay. So we really were tackling a lot so of So how repairs. long, by the, by, the, by the time you did your initial consultation until you actually found them a house, how long was that time period? Fortunately, about uh, a month to six weeks. Oh, that's not short. long at all. No, that's great. It was good. So they were hot to go. They were mo highly motivated to buy something. They were, hev uh, they were hot to go and heavily motivated, but not quite uh, ready to go right when we got into this. We talked a little bit about yeah. this. Did the uh, increase in interest rates affect their decision to buy at all? Um, I think it... I think it, it played a part, but they were pretty heavily uh, they were pretty heavily weighted um, with cash. Okay, so that's it wasn't all cash, but there was some loan involved. But of course, every every ounce, you know, the, every time we're watching the clock as it ticks up, it definitely makes a difference. So, talk about from an agent's perspective. And we talked about this a little bit. Selling a property that's not in your local area, there's some local area disclosures and maybe some you're not familiar with maybe the agents and don't yes. have that communications. How did you succeed into finding a, uh, the, the right house for them and establishing a rapport with that agent and other right. agents in that area? Okay, so I'll answer the first part is it was in the city of LA, so we have standard, the city of LA has standard protocol. So, and it's pretty easy to find out. I know we have a lot of resources here at Remax. Um, like gas shut off valves that, that have to be retrofitted and things of that nature. Um, fortunately, this house was recently remodeled, so it did, it did come with the current code, which was great. Um, so those things I think are easy to find out and you can figure out what, what the area calls for. I think as far as trying to find out what was happening in the market and what to try to just really envelop and be somebody that's saturated in it quickly, the best resource is to call the area at the agents in the area. Because you and I both know, we, we know scatterings about a lot of areas, but when you have a listing in the area, it's hot in your pocket. You know what's going on, you know what the comparables are and what's happening. So if you call the agents and just ask questions as many as you possibly can. So being an out of area agent, did you get warm or cold reception when you were talking to these agents? Um, no, I actually got warm reception. I think if you talk with any amount of authority and, and know the business, at least, that will help. Plus, you had a hot buyer ready to buy one of their listings. I did. And, and the market's shifting. And I think that particular area is also used to, they're a little bit more porous than we are. When we're in the South Bay, it's our bubble. That's right. We're out of area, but sometimes we welcome out of area agents. We're, we're excited. Right. They may pay more. So talk about the, the house. What was the ultimate selling price? And did you were you able to negotiate yes. price? Yes. And how big was it? And it had a view, right? It had a massive sprawling view all the way from downtown LA, uh, LA all the way across to the ocean, actually. So it was massive. Um, basically, we got into escrow after it fell out. And um, uh, the, I don't remember the exact initial price, but it was somewhere around $3 million. And I took every, we did every inspection possible. It was on a hillside. So I knew that I wanted to not only make sure that my clients were confident, but I knew there was some opportunity to unfold some, uh, Maybe some credit, credit opportunity for my buyers. And we were able to negotiate a uh, $70,000 credit. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. And this, uh, uh, six months ago, you couldn't do that. And what's beautiful is when you're negotiating that, the listing agents know when you bring them the reports that if they back out, they're going to have to show all those reports again to the next buyer. So in a market that's changing and shifting, you have to be a little bit more realistic, I think, at this point. But also, it's a protection for your buyer, for you as an Absolutely. agent, and it's a protection for the seller, ultimately. Yes. Definitely CYA. It's happy, happy all the way around. No one looks in the rearview mirror and they move on. And, so know. and it recently closed and your clients are happy. Yeah. That's great. Super excited. So moving forward, you had a listing in the tree section that you recently put into escrow. Tell us about I that. Did. 
Uh, so I sold the dirt to uh, my clients in December of 2020, and we just finished construction. I would say we got our final maybe a couple weeks ago, and now we're in the middle of, uh, it was in the middle of October. So that's probably 22 months from the moment the property closed, so it's a good fact for people to know. Under two years, we built it, I put it on the market um, maybe six months ago, and showed it all the way through. So I chose pre that approach. Construct, pre, yes. during? Yes, and I, I showed it probably 20 times. We had uh, multiple offers along the way. Interesting. Um, and the builder just continuously wanted to see the product finished, which I don't blame him because it was a, more of an art piece, this project. Um, okay. It was really high in finishes. So this is an experienced builder that has done some It is things. an experienced builder, and what, I, what you'll find with builders, there are some builders that are more cost-oriented, and there are some builders that are a little bit more design-oriented. That's right. And these guys were design-oriented. So you do some building on your own, and you have a, a good connection with other builders in the area. How did that come to play, and how have you maintained those relationships? Yeah. Um, so I guess just kind of always looking at where the puck is, you know, skate to where the puck is going. And I noticed around 2011 and 12 that a lot of my fellow agents were representing builders and, and finding dirt for them and, and at least being able to represent them some way, shape or form on the in and the out. Uh, so I saw that as a gold mine. I also really, really was interested in building and I've built a few properties of my own and done some flips. So. I really like the process, so I, I just enjoy finding properties that are teardowns and, and, and I can either involve a... So, a, so do you have a, a, a formula for trying to find the upside potential in a lot? You have a good eye. Apparently, you know what to look out for and what can you tell everybody on, if they wanted to get into this, what do you look for in a, a project? Yeah. Um, well, you know, the bottom line is it always comes down to numbers and possible higher and better use of the potential product. So if there is that and those two things are available and you can find a builder with financing and someone that's ready to go and wherewithal, um, it's a great combination. The challenge right now is that we're in a little bit of a shifty market where builders are sort of taking a, uh, a step back and saying, hey, building costs are still really high. Um, the outlook and the forecast is not necessarily going up and it could possibly be going down. And we know what we saw in 2008 and 9 and 10, it's like the famous Warren Buffett saying, like, you can tell who's been skinny dipping when the tide rolls out. So That's no right. one wants to get caught skinny dipping in this market. So what do you see this shifting market and how has it affected your business and how has it affected your mindset? And how do you think your business will change moving forward? So it's interesting. I, I could talk so, along, you know, I, I could really, I could talk 30 minutes on this subject. But I think right now what happens when the market shifts is it's, it really incentivizes you to either say, I'm in or I'm out. So you really have to be motivated right now. I think you really have to put a lot of effort into nurturing your business and continue to churn. Um, and I would say one positive of this market is that the agents that do last through this period of time, generally the ones that are going to continue for many years to come, um, I think this type of market like 08 through 2011 weeded out a lot of people. Yep. And it made it thinner and it, it brought people back to center and reality. And I think we just all learned that we had to hunker down, roll up our sleeves, and get back in the trenches. That's great. Good philosophy. Congratulations on your success. Keep it rolling into next year. Yeah. And thanks for joining us, Darren. All right.